hey, come on, let's go. We had one, I was like, what is that? Come out at night, you'd know he was out here. Forrest Mays woke one morning to discover he had new neighbors. And then you started seeing a few small trees cut down over there. Furry neighbors. Castor canadensis, the North American beaver. Between 25 and 60 pounds, a pure chewing machine. And then about three years ago, we saw two of them at once. They started bringing sticks, maybe two or three inches in diameter, starting to form a teepee. The beavers dammed the creek below his pond, feasted on his willow trees, plugged the storm drain. They would come up here at night and make a dam, and in the daytime, I would dig it up. <laughs> and one day, a trapper arrived, sent by concerned neighbors to root out the pesky rodents. The entire episode came as a shock because Forrest doesn't live in rural Maryland. He lives in the heart of Annapolis. Oh yeah, there's a mud spot. Now that's probably a lodge. A scouting party sets out in Tuckahoe State Park on Maryland's eastern shore. I'm pretty sure it's an active beaver lodge, at least from this angle. This neighborhood is getting more crowded as well. Oh, I see it. Just 20 years ago, there might have been a handful of beavers at Tuckahoe. I see it. The ones at the bridge have been, like, super active. Have you seen the beavers yet? Today, park ranger Jessica Conway says the population has grown dramatically, building lodges up and down the park's waterways. They used to be regularly trapped in this region, and they're no longer trapped. It has a little bit of fresh mud over here. Claudia Donegan manages habitat restoration programs for Maryland's Department of Natural Resources. Wow. Usually if you have a really active beaver lodge, you're gonna have a lot of greenery submerged in the water because their way to store food is to take green sticks full of leaves and tuck them down in the edge of their lodge. I was here in the winter stalking these beavers. And the young live with the parents for like two years and then they're pushed out and then they need to go build a lodge for themselves. And people think, oh, there's a beaver. What's it doing in, you know, near downtown Annapolis? It's just literally traveling from one river course to another. We're gonna head across the lake over towards the other lodge. It shouldn't surprise anyone if they see more beavers in Maryland parks. It's now park policy. This was pretty active within the last year. There could be a whole family sleeping in there right now. It's their habitat and we can share the land with them. It makes for a really fun paddle and beautiful evenings watching them. The beavers aren't much trouble at Tuckahoe. The deeper water means they're content to build lodges on the muddy slopes alongside waterways. No need for dams, no need for trappers. But in other parks, they can cause trouble. North Point State Park, just a few miles from Baltimore. This part of the park has been transformed into the Black Marsh Wildlands, an area diligently maintained by flat-tailed, furry rodents. The beaver here were causing a little trouble with this trail. Shannon Davis is a Maryland State Park Ranger. It's a very popular hiking trail for birders. When park visitors began complaining that a beaver dam was flooding their favorite hiking trail, the Park Service called in Scott McGill, CEO of Ecotone, an environmental services company. The beaver are the engineers around here. Today, he's returned to North Point with dozens of the country's leading authorities on beaver biology and behavior. Beaver have two things that they need out of the world. Chris Jordan is a biologist with the National Marine Fisheries Service. They need water that's deep enough so they can escape predation, a couple beaver bodies deep, and they need something to eat. So by building a dam, they make deeper water. Or by digging canals, they can spread the water out. And the vegetation, the things that they eat, 
have been used to being eaten by beaver for millions of years. And so when beaver chew on those plants, those plants respond by making more beaver food. So they cut down a tree, and rather than one big tree, there's lots of little sprouts that come off of that. And that's what the beaver wants to eat. Chris and Scott are advocates of a new approach to beavers. Instead of pushing beavers aside, they say we should welcome the animal world's great engineers. Ecotone installed a pond leveler at North Point, a simple drain to carry water past the beavers to guarantee that the pond's water wouldn't rise above a certain point. Beaver have been busy, but they have not flooded it. There's a little problem area lower down where they have another smaller dam that we might have to take action on at some point. In the past 500 years, humans have dramatically changed the landscape of Maryland, and particularly the hydrology of the region. Wetlands became farms. Meandering streams became deep, narrow gullies. Asphalt and storm drains rush water through and below our neighborhoods into the Chesapeake Bay. That rush of water carries silt and nitrogen-based fertilizers that threaten the bay's future. Some of the things that we need now as society, like cool water, clean water, control of movement of sediment, control of wildfire in the West, all of those come from a functioning natural environment. There were millions of beavers in the Chesapeake watershed before Europeans arrived, and water moved much more slowly in their world. Marshes spread across much larger areas. Different trees and different animals benefited. Soil tended to stay where it was. Wetland flora absorbed nutrients before they reached open water. And you don't need to look any further than North Point Park to see how important that was. This beaver wetland is literally the last chance to slow water before it enters the Chesapeake Bay. That's the whole idea of nature-based solutions. And because the maintenance contract is by a rodent, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Joppa, Maryland. The County Park Service installed a pond leveler here to protect the trail at Robert Copenhaver Park. This is where the little gunpowder and the big gunpowder come together. Joppa Town was once a thriving colonial port on the Gunpowder River. But agriculture and deforestation brought silt to the harbor, and trade here moved to the growing port of Baltimore. Harford County, every 10 years or so, spends anywhere from two to $500,000 dredging out Foster's Branch and a couple of other areas in Joppa Town because there's boats downstream. We may not need to spend that as often. This is really catching all the sediment that's coming in from the entire watershed. What we think of as the Northern Hemisphere, those valleys that are flat, are made by beaver. Millions of years of beaver activity, ponds filling up with sediment, beaver moving, filling up another pond with sediment, they changed the shape of the planet. Humans looked at those flat, fertile areas and built farms and railroads and towns. They planted their own trees and bushes and crops. And when the beavers are allowed back, the early results can be jarring. We've been taught for the last 30 years that if we just plant more trees, folks, everything's gonna be great. And a beaver comes in and it's like, wow, all the trees died. But a lot of these trees, these cherries and poplars, you know, they're not supposed to be here in these floodplain areas, right? Historically, what did we have in here? We had things like willow and alder and maple. And those species, you know, can be trimmed out by a beaver and, and they still, you know, will come back. They will regenerate. In fact, sometimes they even do better. So this is the first vineyard that we planted on the farm. Rob DeFord is the president of Bordy Vineyards. Apart from the grapes, Bodie farms more than 100 acres of traditional crops and livestock. The farm is bisected by Long Green Creek. 
When there was a big rainstorm, the stream would run through at, at a roaring velocity and do a lot of damage to the banks and carry all that silt downstream. When the farm started a project to spread out the stream and slow its waters, beaver arrived. We didn't know we had a beaver within 100 miles of here. At first, the beaver were trapped. But Ecotone suggested a pond leveler and convinced the farm to try something new, a beaver-engineered wetland. Since the original construction of the dam, silt has sort of infiltrated that structure, and now we have a plant community coming out of the dam, so it's actually hard to even see it anymore. So at one point, we had a concern that it a big rain event might breach the dam. I'm not concerned about that anymore. This is nature healing itself. Audubon has cataloged over 100 species of birds in this wetland in this only 10 acres. The trout population is now healthy. For us, it's really introducing a wonderful element on the farm that we enjoy, but we also can see the effect on water quality. And the stream is rarely muddy anymore. It's really hard to get a feel for the shape of this anymore because it's so grown up. Though skeptical at first, Rob has become an unlikely beaver ally. There are probably a lot more chapters to be written in this story. But where we are today is that we have a healthy colony of beavers living behind that original dam. It's not getting any bigger, and it seems that we have reached equilibrium with them, which is great. If we can see into here. Back in Annapolis, Forrest Mays made a bet that yeah. he could live with beavers and turned away the trapper who'd come to remove them. Can you see that pipe down there? My pond got maybe a foot deeper, so the water quality got better. You know, you have to get a permit to trap. In Annapolis, it's still allowed. Many cities don't allow trapping, and therefore they have to do something else, so. But I know there's tension sometimes, but there's so many places working on easing that tension now that, you know, we can actually work with them. My hope is that people get to enjoy the the joy of beavers like I have, they are the most incredible, funny little animals.